to our communion service here at Bombo. During this service, our hearts hold a special welcome to all of you joining us online, and especially to Lucia from Brazil, who will read and reflect on the second reading for us. Karina will lead us into our service with some music.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. us that you are, abide in the hearts that are just and true. Grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling place pleasing for you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. John will read the first one. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, if a swelling or scab or shiny spot appears on a man's skin. The case of leprosy of the skin is to be suspected. The man must be taken to Aaron, the priest, or to one of the priests who are his sons. The man is leprous, he is unclean. The priest must declare him unclean he is suffering from leprosy of the head. A man infected with leprosy must wear his clothing torn and his hair disordered. He must shield his upper lip and cry, unclean, unclean, for as long as the, the disease lasts, he must be unclean. And therefore he must live apart he must live outside the camp. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Heaven will read the psalm for us. Yeah. 
the response is, You are my refuge, O Lord, you fill me with the joy of salvation. You are my refuge, O Lord, you fill me with the joy of salvation. Happy the one whose offense is forgiven, whose sin is remitted, or happy the person to whom the Lord imputes no guilt, in whose spirit is no guile. You are my refuge, O Lord, you fill me with the joy of salvation. But now I have acknowledged my sins, my guilt I did not hide. I said, I'll confess my offense to the Lord, and you, Lord, have forgiven guilt of my sin. You are my refuge, O Lord, you fill me with the joy of salvation. Rejoice, rejoice in the Lord, Exalt, you just. O come, bring out your joy, all you upright of heart. You are my refuge, O Lord. You fill me with the joy of salvation. A reading from the word of the Lord, the first letter to the first Corinthians 10, 31 to 11, 1. Whatever you eat, whatever you drink, whatever you do at all, do it for the glory of God. Never do anything offensive to anyone, to Jews, or Greeks, or to the church of God, just as I try to be helpful to everyone at all times, not anxious for my own advantage, but for the advantage of everybody else, so that they may be saved. Take me for your model as I take Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Peace and sharing, communi communion, being together, are needs that our hearts long for. In the silence of meditation, we find the peace and joy of communion, and also the lack, the memories, the knowledge of where peace and joy are not. May this lack move us to prayer, and may this prayer always make us act for a better world. It is in respecting of the other that we find Christ, and it is in adjusting to action that we find joy and peace. No to aggression, no to lies. Yes to harmony. May we persevere on the path and give way to those who seek for a while in disturbing path. To stand in the best way and to build and to be a path for others is not a synonym for forgiveness, but for letting go. In the daily exercise of conversion through meditation, we observe fears, lies, aggression of our own or that of others and we strength the existence of love. It is in carrying out what comes to us through trust and truth that the logic of what is pure becomes perceptible. Even if we are not purity itself, we know what is pure, true, transformative, and good. Even when we act because of indignation, we may act to construct peace. And in the silence of meditation, we may learn how to do it. When we are in silence of meditation, we can see even briefly what guides us, what moves us. We are like the ship noticing the ocean, the bird noticing the air. Within this experience germinates and grows the peace which may become effective.
May your action be inspiring for us as well as for others. Thank you, Lucia. Thank you very much. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. May the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our mind so that we can see what hope his call holds for us. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. A leper came to Jesus and pleaded on his knees. If you want to, he said, you can cure me. Feeling sorry for him, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him. Of course I want to, he said. Be cured. And the leprosy left him at once, and he was cured. Jesus immediately sent him away and sternly ordered him, Mind you say nothing to anyone, but go and show yourself to the priest and make the offering for your healing prescribed by Moses as evidence of your recovery. The man went away, but then started talking about it freely and telling the story everywhere so that Jesus could no longer go openly into any town, but had to stay outside in places where nobody lived. Even so, people from all around would come to him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. When we join this celebration of thanksgiving, we do so in the knowledge or in the faith that each of us is being held, supported, nourished by the presence that lives and celebrates with us, among us, within each of us. The most intimate connection we can imagine, beyond our imaginings, is holding out its hand and inviting us deeper into the heart of all being, beckoning us from within as a flickering shadow paints pictures on a wall and invites us to enter and gather around the warm inner flame, the source of light that is the cause of this flickering shadow that is waiting, shining, 
smiling in recognition, joining our celebration today. In the Gospel, we hear how Jesus receives someone in terrible suffering. We know something of just how terrible from the first reading. A leper came to Jesus. Maybe it was on the road, in some lonely place, maybe outside the synagogue, maybe at someone's home. A leper came to Jesus and pleaded on his knees. If you want to, he said, you can cure me. Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him. Of course I want to, he said. Be cured. Of course I want to. We hear many times of his miracles and of the many, many people who came to him for healing, sometimes in wild multitudes, sometimes in small groups, and sometimes as unique individuals. And we hear how all who came were cured, fed, released into fullness of life. But I don't know of any other occasion where Jesus performs his miracle with the words, I want to, expressing directly his desire, his desire to touch and to heal, to complete the circuit of love opened in him by the Father and open still. Of course, I want to. Not only is his gift offered freely, but it is the default, the of course, the very nature of the Son to carry out the wishes of the Father. It is a given, and it is given given already and waiting for its release from within each of us, the love of God, ready and waiting for our simple recognition, our awareness of its presence within us, and waiting for us to open the door, waiting for our consent. Like us, the leper wants to be healed cleansed, made whole again. His plea on bended knee is an absolutely fundamental expression of his desire. And his desire is Jesus's desire, is the Father's desire. If you want to, of course I want to. Is it even possible to ask the question, what is it that I want with a desire so fundamental it is in accord with the same eternal wish of the Father, the Son and the Spirit, the God who is love? A wish so timely and innocent and true that it is already granted, only waiting for release. Not desire, perhaps, for the little things, the self-imagined solutions, but the fundamental thing. Not so much a request, even, as an awakening to my own default, my own nature, made in the image of God the Father. And when we want what we are, then we are already what we want our self waiting for us to return, the most basic, most fundamental truth of our being, the I am in each of us and in everything. It is the deepest desire because it is the same as God's wish for us to be who we are, who we were made to be. And to be who we are is the greatest freedom and requires that we surrender everything that we are not. Like the monk whose full glass won't allow for any new water to enter, we too may prepare to empty ourselves in meditation, 
to let go of all our limitations and rest in the freedom of simply being who we are, to accept who we are. This is a wish in perfect communion with Jesus, who wants to heal us, to free us from illusion, and to communicate his love to us in all clarity, so we may know again who we truly are, and might begin to share the gift of our being with the world, and to reconnect the circuit of love by stretching out our hand to touch another, to remind them they are free and they are loved. It is our nature. Of course we want to. We know we the intercessions for us. Thank you, Karina. St. Paul urges us today not to be offensive to anyone. May our meditation practice help us to be more aware of others, bringing love, care and respect into all our relationships. The leper came to Jesus and pleaded for healing. May physical, emotional and spiritual healing be in our lives. May all those who have hurt and betrayed us, we pray for all those who have hurt or betrayed us and we pray that we will always be ready to forgive. We pray for all who have suffered from the wild forest fires in Borneo and Colombia the flooding in Syria and Mauritius and the drought in Catalonia. We pray that help will come quickly and that we will all realize that we need to save our planet Mother Earth. We pray we continue to pray for the people of Palestine, Israel, Ukraine, Russia and Sudan and all other countries affected by war. May violence, oppression, greed and destruction be replaced with justice and peace. We pray for our families and friends, for the deceased members of our families and community, for all who ask our prayers in today's chat, and we hold in our hearts those in our Bunvo book of prayers. In India, Carrie James, in Australia, Alison Betteridge, in UK. We pray in silence for our personal intentions. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of your Son bringing peace and hope to our troubled world. Hear our prayers and grant what we ask in the name of Jesus, your Son, the Prince of Peace, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Amen.
as we prepare to receive Christ in the Eucharist, we pray in the words he gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, and keep us free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Portero de Dios, quien quita el pecado del mundo, ten piedad de nosotros. Portero de Dios, quien quita el pecado del mundo, ten piedad de nosotros. Portero de Dios, quien quita el pecado del mundo, Danos la paz. Uh, we hold the host in our hand and receive today. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall dwell with me. May the body of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, so that we may always long for that food by which we truly live. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Um, couple of updates uh, for things that are happening um, this Monday, tomorrow. Uh, Lawrence continues his series online, The Space Between Words, How to Read the Bible and Other Sacred Texts. Tomorrow, episode four, The Prophets and the Axial Age. That starts at 7.30. On Wednesday, we'll be celebrating uh, Ash Wednesday online, uh, Mass at six o'clock here in France, uh, 6 p.m. And then uh, the following Friday, February 16th and Saturday the 17th, there is an online retreat uh, to begin Lent. It's a kind of afternoon, evening thing. All the details are online. And then uh, the Holy Week retreat here at Bonvo from the 23rd to the 31st of March. Uh, please register online. Thank you to everyone. Thank you to everyone who's joined online. Thank you, Lucia. Thank you, Karina, and Kevin, and John, and everybody here, Anella. We ask for God's blessing on all of us, our families and friends. May Almighty God bless us in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thank you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.